or instant transformation moment. And the reason we call it that is that we use the 3Q method to activate spiritual intelligence, which acts almost instantly to shift you from ego to soul and to activate your spiritual intelligence. So we're going to use the 3Q method together today uh, as we meet uh, together from all over the world. But before we uh, use the method and experience our spiritual intelligence together, I want to spend a few minutes talking about existential anxiety. I know it sounds like a big word, doesn't it? Um, and for some people, it's um, something they're not really that familiar with. But I think many people can relate to the experience of existential anxiety. It's the experience that existence is a dilemma that there's no understanding of the reason or the purpose of existence and there's no comprehension of how to be free of suffering. There just seems to be this um, condition of uh, mortality and that when you're dead, you're dead and there's no reason or purpose for existing in the first place. Now, this is a torment for many people. It was certainly for me before I discovered spiritual truth. Um, I can remember many times uh, in my um, growing up years and in my early adulthood feeling despair about reality. Because, of course, I was um, a victim of the... Um, um, prevailing worldview, which was materialism, right? Still is the prevailing worldview, that everything's fundamentally material, including our own consciousness. This is a very toxic belief because it plunges you into self-doubt, uh, even a doubt of uh, the world, doubt of others, it plunges you into a sense of futility and meaninglessness, which is unbearable. And the most that people could do is distract themselves from it. I'd like to read you something I wrote recently for a conference about existential anxiety. And it goes into detail about how 3Q, spiritual intelligence, eliminates existential anxiety. So here's that section now, should be on your screen. This is a list of all the ways that spiritual intelligence is beneficial. And number 14 is eliminate existential anxiety. So I'm going to read this paragraph here. Mainstream science and mainstream secular education are based on the philosophy of materialism. Consequently, students are taught to believe that everything is fundamentally material, including their own consciousness. The implications are devastating for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose, and inevitably results in a great deal of existential anxiety. By contrast, spiritual intelligence is based on post-materialist science, which eliminates the existential anxiety that is otherwise imposed on students by mainstream secular education. Post-materialist science fosters positive values such as compassion, respect, care, love and peace because it promotes an awareness of the deep interconnections between ourselves and each other and nature at large, and highlights the 
non-material nature of consciousness itself, which is free of the perishable destiny of the material dimension of reality. So when I discovered uh, spiritual truth, it was such a relief to discover that consciousness is not mortal, that consciousness is the condition of reality itself, is, is reality itself, and that birth and death are uh, played upon that reality that don't limit that reality. Now, at the end of this talk, I summarize it with a paragraph called the new, par the new Paradigm Whose Time Has Come. And in this paragraph, I mention how spiritual intelligence exceeds materialism. So I'm going to read this paragraph now. Spiritual intelligence is not religious and does not require beliefs of any kind. Spiritual intelligence is entirely a matter of experiencing the truth of who you are. Consider this, whatever arises to your attention, you are the one who is aware of it. Therefore, you are not your body and you are not your mind. Instead, you are the consciousness of your body and mind, including all the contents of your mind all thoughts, all emotions, and all perceptions. Therefore, no matter how skeptical you are, you cannot escape the essential truth that you are not your thoughts and emotions, but you are consciousness itself. Consciousness itself feels inherently peaceful, compassionate, and loving. This is the essence of spiritual intelligence. When we live with spiritual intelligence, it's a liberating experience because it frees us from the perspective of scientific materialism, which reduces human beings to machines and persuades us that life is nothing more than a random accident. Scientific materialism represents the most painful limitation of the conditioned mind in contemporary mainstream culture. It's responsible for extremes of existential angst that have driven millions of people to inconsolable desperation and despair. I mean, just think of the art and literature of the last century. It's almost entirely a catalogue of desperation and despair. The consequences continue to undermine human society and destroy attempts to create global cooperative community. This reductionist mentality can no longer be tolerated if human society is to survive and thrive. The remedy can only be found in the light of spiritual truth. This is why spiritual intelligence is emerging now. Spiritual intelligence is the new paradigm whose time has come the new paradigm whose time has come. Absolutely true, because I think uh, unless we overcome the materialist paradigm, we're basically going to destroy ourselves, which we've embarked on uh, in a very enthusiastic manner uh, for the last few centuries and are continuing to do so. The only way out of it is to change the paradigm from materialism to post-materialism. And spiritual intelligence represents the intelligence of the post-materialist era. So um, I do hope this has um, been relevant to you and that you uh, can relate to what I'm discussing here. Now, what I'd like to do is to share a few slides with you now, uh, which illustrate how to use the 3Q method to activate spiritual intelligence. So I'm going to bring up some PowerPoint slides so that I can share 
this method with you and explain it in the simplest way. So let me just find that screen. Here we are. So this symbol represents three dimensions of intelligence. IQ, EQ and SQ. Intellectual intelligence, emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence. And the symbol opens out into the twin poles of attention. We have the object pole of attention and the subject pole of attention. At the object pole is everything you're aware of. Thoughts, emotions, memories, perceptions, beliefs, self-image. In other words, states of body and mind. And at the subject pole of attention is simply consciousness itself, which is who you are, which is aware of objects of attention. So when you identify with objects of attention, states of body and mind, that's called being the ego. And when you identify with consciousness itself, that's called being the soul. And the way we activate spiritual intelligence is by shifting from ego to soul. Shifting from being my thoughts and emotions to being consciousness itself, which is conscious of my thoughts and emotions. And to make that shift, we have to go through this mechanism. So what you see on the page now is the human operating system. We're either being the ego or we're being the soul, one or the other. That's how we operate. And to shift from ego to soul, we have to go through this mechanism here, the mechanism of attention. And it so happens that there are that there's a very rapid way through this mechanism from ego to soul that only has three steps. Notice, feel and be. In a moment I'm going to describe what these three steps are and you can do these three steps with me so that you too can experience shifting from ego to soul, from false self to true self, which is what activates your spiritual intelligence. So step one is notice. And you might say, well, notice what? Well, you simply notice the human operating system, that it has two poles of attention. What you're aware of at the object pole and awareness itself, which is what you are at the subject pole. So step one, which is notice, is simply noticing this. And of course, the reason why we have to notice it is that we often forget, right? We often get bound up with our thoughts and emotions, forget all about I'm the one aware of my thoughts and emotions. You know, We say things like, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm anxious. When in fact the truth is, I am aware of an emotion of sadness. I'm aware of an emotion of anger. I'm aware of an emotion of anxiety. That's the true position. But we conflate that and go, I'm anxious, I'm scared, you know? I'm angry. So we identify with our with the contents of consciousness instead of identifying with consciousness itself. So step one, which is notice, is about just noticing that I'm the one aware of the contents of consciousness. I'm not what I'm aware of. Step two is feel. And here's where we get to feel what it's like at the subject pole as the soul. Now bear in mind, these three steps can be done in a second or less. It's taking us longer because I'm describing what these three steps are. But when you're familiar with these three steps, you can do it in a second. So step two is feel. And this is about feeling what it's like as the soul, as the true self, at the subject pole, as consciousness itself. And to do this step two of feel, we use a breathing technique. So bring your attention to your breathing. Find that still point at the end of the in-breath when you're neither breathing in or breathing out. You don't need to hold your breath. It's a natural pause in the breathing. Did you find that still point there at the end of the in-breath?
It's just a natural pause at the end of the in-breath when you stop breathing in and before you start breathing out. Just find that pause. Okay, now feel what it feels like in that pause. How does it feel in that pause of the, in the breathing at the end of the in-breath? Feels peaceful, doesn't it? Just check it out again. Feel what it feels like in that pause in the breathing at the end of the in-breath. Feels peaceful, right? That is what happens to the thinking mind in that pause in the breathing. The thinking mind pauses too, doesn't it? That's why it feels peaceful, because it's the mind that creates the disturbance. So each time you come to the end of the in-breath, just notice that pause in the breathing and feel the peace there. So this is step two, feel. We have a further step to go, which is be. So when you find that peace in the still point at the end of the in-breath, it's time to move to step three. Be that peaceful feeling. That means allow that peace to go all over your body and mind. Now take a look around, just confirm for yourself that you are now being consciousness itself. You're not being any of the contents of consciousness. You might be aware that thoughts and emotions are occurring, but you're simply being the field of awareness within which thoughts and emotions arise. So you're being consciousness itself right now. This is equivalent to being present. And you can feel not only peace, but all the other qualities of spiritual intelligence. Compassion, and joy, and love, and creativity. All these things naturally emerge when you're simply being consciousness itself. So this is called using your spiritual intelligence. And here we are, from all over the world, experiencing our spiritual intelligence together. And whenever you lose that connection simply to be in consciousness, just do the three steps again. Notice, feel, Find that still point at the end of the in-breath. Feel that peace and then be that peace, allowing it to go all over your body and mind. So it's very simple to connect to your spiritual intelligence and to reconnect to it when you lose the connection. Now this is something to be discovered that spiritual intelligence is easy to experience. Notice, feel, and be. And you can do this in a second or less. And you can do this in any circumstances, in association with any activity. You might be walking down the street, you might be talking to someone, you might be engaged in working, but you can still do the 3Q portal. Notice, feel and be. And continue with your work or with any activity. 
from a higher dimension of intelligence. With access to all the qualities and capabilities of your higher self. So just imagine how it transforms your day. And of course, it eliminates existential anxiety. Because suddenly you shift from fear, doubt and sorrow which are endemic in existential anxiety to peace, joy and love. You just make that shift. And then once you've seen through your existential anxiety, it can never return because you've seen through it, you've gone beyond it. And you always have the means for transcending anxiety, including existential anxiety. But once you've seen through existential anxiety, it never returns in the form that it used to cause so much suffering. You've seen through it. You know existence is not fundamentally material. Existence is fundamentally consciousness. This is your firm discovery. And once you've discovered it, you can't not know it. So I hope you'll join us again next week at the same time, Wednesday, 12 noon GMT, when we'll meet again to experience our spiritual intelligence together. And as we meet from all over the world, we're doing this not only for our own benefit, but also to contribute to global consciousness. The more of us who develop this ability to shift rapidly from ego to soul and activate spiritual intelligence, the more of us that develop this ability, the more we'll contribute this pathway to collective consciousness so it becomes easier and easier for other people to experience their spiritual intelligence as well so i hope you recognize that you're benefiting not just yourself but others too by attending itmo meetings every week if you can't meet with us live you'll find the video recordings on the SQ page uh, on Facebook. So I'll say goodbye now, and I hope to see you next week. Bye for now.